Hi and welcome back to another screencast from myself, Tim Sutton. Um, much like if you've been watching Niles, things I've been enjoying just um, recording kind of things as I, as I get my machine set up or um, I was thinking also to just make some recordings of how I explore QGIS. Um, most people think that, you know, if you work in the QGIS project, you know everything about QGIS and all that it can do. And that, well, there probably are some people that do. I'm not one of them. And I, much like the rest of you, have to explore and discover things for myself. And I kind of enjoy that um, in the workflows. Um, so today I'm going to be looking a little bit at how we can make scalable symbology. So that is symbology that adapts to the map scale as you zoom in out the map so that it's kind of appropriate to the scale that you're looking at. And there are different approaches that you can do, uh, that you can do this um, with. For example, you can set rules to display different symbols at different scales. Um, but I want to be a little bit lazy and kind of make my symbology a bit adaptive. So I'm going to be playing with this idea of scaling um, the sizes of symbols and the width and things. Um, based on the map scale. So I've got some data from a client here and I'm going to um, be playing around with this data set and I want to basically have it so that as I zoom out you can see as I zoom out the points all start to cluster on top of each other. Now we could use some clustering symbology in QGIS to, to deal with that so you've got um, something like this where you can uh, where you can say okay as I zoom out I want to cluster things Let me find a better example of that oh, I actually made some pretty things here <laughs> but uh, I was actually trying to show the other one this one the point cluster one sorry um, so there you can see that it sort of conflates those points into red dots when they there are too many on top of each other and then uh, expands them out into white dots when they are not on top of each other. And you can go and change all the settings for that, um, uh, the rendered cluster dot as you want to as well. So you could make it just some kind of special big white dot to show that it's actually the cluster or whatever you want to do. Um, but that's not really what I'm after. What I'm after is that the, the, the size of the dots actually change according to the scale of the map. So, um, so we're not going to do it like that. So I'm going to just go back and set that back to a single symbol. And I'm going to just start off with a simple white marker like I had before. But what I want to be doing is changing this, the size of the actual marker based on the scale. Now there's two different approaches we can use. The one that Niall was suggesting is to use this map units option here, which would basically make the scale, the size of the point relative to the current map units. You can see that, um, wait a minute. So um, I have my map is in meters, so I think I have to make it like maybe something like that. And then you can see that's like basically 400 meters on the ground. And as I zoom in, it's still going to occupy 400 meters on the ground. And so the size will be relative to the um, size on the ground that we've told the symbol to occupy. But um, we could have also a slightly more smooth effect so that this, the size changes in, in a sort of a spline curve or an arc. So that's the main thing that I want to show you today. Probably this approach with just using the map uh, units is more um, efficient because I think probably Q just has to do less computation in the background, but maybe a bit less fun. So I'm going to... I'm going to switch this away from uh, map units. I'm going to keep it in, uh, let's use pixels, for example. So let's just go back to 
uh, render that so that's at, let's say six pixels and you can see um, the size will stay constant and they'll all start to gang up on each other when you zoom out um, what I want to do now is as I zoom in I want those to get bigger and bigger and bigger so I'll go over here to the little box next to the size and use this expression builder but I'm going to use the assistant and this is some really cool functionality I think Niall added this Niall Dawson added this in to QGIS um, and it lets you create like a curve function to determine the the size of a, um, of a symbol for example so I'm going to use for my source I'm going to use a variable called map underscore scale now that variable is basically whatever is currently the um, denominator on the on the right basically of the scale equation over here so as I zoom in um, this number is going to decrease and as I zoom out it's going to increase and then over here this is the domain so this is basically this the scale range that I want to to work in so I'm going to just do it from 1 to 1 million and you can see it's already started to construct um, a set of symbols for me and maybe I'll really just take it like that so we can see what it's doing so now it's kind of doing the opposite of what I wanted which is that as I zoom out those symbols become larger so we know we're going to have to invert the scale range uh, or, or the, the symbol size calculation so that um, we get the reverse effect we get um, these numbers getting smaller um, as we get as we go from one end to the other so to do that I can say over here I want the range to go from say, let's say 20 pixels down to 5 pixels so we can again go test that and uh, you'll see now that the, I, the symbols are getting smaller as I zoom out and as I zoom in they're getting bigger but I haven't really gained much over what I had by just using the map um, map units for the for the, the symbol size because the size is just changing linearly as I move in and out of different scale ranges now I want to have a nice curve effect so I'm going to go over here and use this transform, uh, transform curve and what this will let me do is I can m sort of make it work a bit more like this um, I can even put more uh, more changes into the curve so that it can be a little bit more exaggerated this way um, so what I'm going to get now is that um, the size at the smallest scale, end of the scale is really small and then it's sort of going to go kind of in an easy way um, bigger and bigger as I zoom in so let's have a look and see how that works out for us so we're zoomed in already and we've got big symbols and then you can see them getting smaller and smaller and I think with the last little tweak I could go and make the maximum size or the, the maximum the minimum size to be zero and then our symbols might disappear um, this is the actual expression that has been calculated uh, created by using that uh, tool but I'm going to just stick to using the assistant for now so I'm going to go and change this to be zero here um, so that means when we're at this end of the curve we should be at a zero and when we're at this end we should be uh, at, a, at a 20 pixel um, uh, symbol and we've also got it set to zero when it's null so let's have a look now so you can see my my symbols just disappear as you zoom out and then appear as you zoom in and then we'll get a little bit bigger slowly and then at some point they'll start getting bigger as you as you zoom in, in closer to one to one we can go and tweak that function to get just the effect that we want but it's it's quite a nice efficient thing to be just in one uh, simple place being able to make your symbols change size as you zoom in and out um, 
uh, and we can go play around with these, this function to, to make it do different things. So, for example, if you put it in a curve like this, you might get some effect where uh, you only see the, the symbol. Oopsie, I'm going the wrong way. You only see the symbol at medium scale, but you don't see it when you, when you zoom really in. You can see it's slowly disappearing. And you don't see it out in small scale. So just depending on how you set up that that curve, you can influence when exactly the symbols will appear. Maybe I want the curve to look more like this, and I can just play around with it as I want to. All right, and then the last thing I was going to try is just see if we could use the same concept with some some line data. I've got some roads here. And uh, I wanted to see if I can play with it. So I'm, I haven't tried this before. I'm just doing it off the cuff as I as I talk to you. So let's see what happens. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna just use pixels, um, and I'm gonna go to use this assistant here. And again, I'm gonna use this um, var um, map underscore scale variable. And I'm going to work in the same scale range, so from 0 to 1 million. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah. Um, and I can play with some of these other options here as well. So let's see what happens if we do, um, uh, we want to do an exponential, I think. Um, I can play with the exponent. Um, uh, this is the pixel we want to make the, uh, the the size go thinner when it's um, when it's zoomed out so we want a very thin line maybe maybe we can go down to zero as well and then um, drop some points in our curve here and try to get some nice effect like this all right, let's go and have a look and see what it's going to do for us. So you can see the map is gradually getting less detailed and less um, uh, bold as we zoom out. And um, eventually I would like those roads to have disappeared. So I think I did something wrong. I'm going to copy the symbol um, for my points and use it for this other black dot layer as well. So um, one nice thing to do is just to go here and just to save the symbol um, and I'm just going to call it shrinking white marker. I'll add it to my favorite and I'll put it in my Tim, Tim Styles collection. Um, so now I've uh, got it over here. I can just go to the other one, this one here, and choose my style. And then you'll see that it's got all that expression stuff already set up and all I have to do now is just choose a different color basically for it. And let's choose uh, black as well. All right, so now both are disappearing as I zoom in and out. The, the, the lines are getting thicker as I zoom in and out. What I still miss is just that the roads eventually will disappear. I think I would like them to disappear. So I'm gonna have one more go. And see if I can make them disappear. So, um, I'm just going to check all my options here. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm not actually sure why they, yeah, maybe I can just move it over like this. A little bit and see what happens. Oops. There we go. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now the roads are gone. And I can get them gradually getting thicker and thicker as I zoom in. So you could imagine if you've got a neighborhood with buildings and roads and things, and then as you're zooming out that you can just make things disappear like that. 
So that's what I wanted to show you today. I'm sure there's probably a thousand better ways to achieve the same effect. I'd love to hear from you if you have got a, a better approach. Um, feel free to pop me a note on Twitter. I'm at Tim Linux on Twitter um, and share your great ideas. Thanks for watching.